We sometimes look to the stars and let our imaginations roam. But then we come back to Earth. Shirin Hack, an astronomer from Trinidad and Tobago, is a rare individual who manages to be on Earth and keep her head in the stars. My father had a pair of binoculars that would be around and I took the binoculars and I looked up at the moon at around age nine. And like I say, I never look back down. She is the only working astronomer in the Caribbean, which is a feat in itself. It's difficult to imagine astronomy as a viable pursuit in the region given its many earthbound difficulties. I went to UE, right, natural sciences, and my degree was a major in um, physics. And after that, the calling remained. I wanted to do astronomy. But anyway, I turned, everyone told me, you're not going to get a job with that. Um, you can't do astronomy in Trinidad. But things have changed since then. Astronomy is no longer just stargazing. Astronomy is like the queen of the sciences that brings all mathematics, physics, chemistry, and now even biology. So one of the beauty about astronomy and relevance to our people is that it gives you transferable skills. As the science has progressed, the Caribbean and Trinidad specifically has emerged as a site for a cutting edge development in astronomy. If you take up a very old textbook in astronomy, you're not even gonna find a topic called astrobiology. You take up a current one, they will all have it. So it's a cutting edge field that developed over the period that I've been involved in astronomy. I was very surprised, but also very excited about the combination of astronomy and physics with biology. Looking at the question of life in the universe, we all wanted to know about Mars on life and what's happening on the other planets. And this was one area of research project which was going to try to answer the questions about whether we have life on Mars and, and other planets. And if we do, what is it like? Apparently, there are areas in Trinidad which are perfect for the study of astrobiology. It's a huge question, and it's one of the big things now, life in the universe. So what could we in Trinidad contribute to such a big question like that? Now, Mars has features like mud volcanoes. So we can't quite go to Mars right now and do testing, but we could go down to the mud volcanoes and see what kind of environment it was regarding whether it was conducive to life. Similarly with the Pitch Lake. Now, the mud volcanoes act as an analog for Mars, but the Pitch Lake, um, Titan, which is Saturn's largest moon, has an abundance of hydrocarbon lakes. And guess who else has an abundance of hydrocarbon lake? Us in Trinidad. Trinidad is also well positioned, literally, for observational astronomy. When telescopes in high latitudes cannot view an object, it is often visible here. This has led to a collaboration with foreign universities to set up an observatory in Trinidad. So one of the projects that we got started with was um, establishing an observatory here. There was, and to date, there is no research grade um, observatory in the English speaking Caribbean. And um, you had to be everything. You had to be project manager, you had to be architect, you had to be software engineer to make this thing happen. And uh, why were we doing this? Well, it was a project we got involved with Finland but they are 60 degrees north. So they were monitoring a quasar, which is a black hole kind of system. And uh, when it went below the horizon, they couldn't see it. So guess who could see it? Us, conveniently placed close to the equator, were, could see it when Finland couldn't. So we took over the observation when it was needed at those times. She has been affiliated with many international organizations. I work together with them. She has been able to team up with almost 12 universities from North America to apply for a very large grant. It would enable us, one, to develop a large laboratory with equipment, uh, which would enable the university to train students, for example, in computer science relevant to data analysis, for example, Python programming which is a very much used programming language nowadays. Uh, we can train also kids at school using data that we get from the atmosphere so that they can at least see the usefulness of physics. Hack is also a passionate educator. 
teaching at the university and creating television programs for public education. She is a phenomenal lecturer, a phenomenal educator. There are very few people that you could ever meet that has such a passion and a drive for the things that they do sometimes in this world, in this university even. And you just walk into a class and you feel it's all there. You feel all the passion laid out on the tables. She would bring her little toys, some Star Trek stuff, some Doctor Who stuff, a little Einstein figurine at some point in time, I think I remember seeing. And you just, you just feel so immersed in astrophysics and in the course and there's never a dull moment with her. She is able to propagate physics down to the labels. I, I think that would be one of the most significant uh, achievements that uh, she has had in Trinidad and Tobago and that has allowed us as a department to prosper. For her achievements as a scientist, teacher and pioneer, Dr. Shireen Hack of Trinidad and Tobago is the Anthony N. Sapga Caribbean Awards for Excellence Laureate in Science and Technology for 2020.